Now, if I walk up to you and ask you, can you find the square root of 4096? Now, you, have, you may say, I can do the factorization method. Or if you have a calculator, you can just use it. That's the shortest method. But there's this other method called, uh, it's in the book, it's called uh, finding it by the division method. Now, that's just one of the many methods you can use. So, let's look at, in this video, what this division method is. A method or an algorithm is simply a set of steps, a recipe basically. And if you follow that recipe perfectly, you will get the dish. In this case, your dish is your square root of this number. But my goal in this video is not to uh, tell you what these steps are exactly and see if you can follow it, but to understand why the recipe works. To begin that, the first thing I want you to do is imagine what square root of 4096 really is. It's exactly the same as asking, if I had a square of area 4096, the side of the square will be the square root. These both are the same because you multiply the side and multiply it by itself, you'll get 4096. Now our job then is to guess what the side of the square should be such that the area is 4096. And the problem is that there isn't a great way to do this. It's a guessing game. That's why I'm saying we have to guess. So to start guessing, maybe the first thing we can do is find out how many digits would, be, would, there, would, would there be in this number on this side. To do that, let's look at this. Our square is a four-digit number. So what will the number of digits in our square root be? You can do this by noticing that 10 square is 100. That's three digits. So we know our uh, square root has to be more than 10. And notice that 100 square though is not 1000 but 10,000. And that's not four digits, that's five. So you know that our square root has to be less than 100. So more than 10, less than 100, in other words, the square root that we are trying to find is a two-digit number. One digit and then one more. It's a two-digit number. Now That's awesome because now we don't have to guess all from all possible numbers. We just have to guess from the set of two-digit numbers. Now, how do we do this? We, we want to do this digit by digit. Uh, we want to first try and guess the first digit and then the second digit. Now, what does guessing this first digit really mean? So if you can find this first digit, what you've really found is what is the largest square that you can fit into this? That's a multiple of 10. Now, where does this multiple of 10 come from? Because when you guess a digit, say 3 over here, you're not really guessing 3. 3 is in the 10th place. So you're guessing that it's our square root is 30 plus something. Right? When you see 32, you will say that number is 30 plus 2. What do you think is the largest square you can fit, which is a multiple of 10? Again, you have to guess. 10 square is just 100. 4096 is very far away. So you go, you make a few jumps. Maybe you try 4. So, uh, which is basically, if you, if you guess 4 here, that's like guessing 40 square. But what is 4 square? It's 16. So 40 square is 1600. You still have a lot of space. Maybe then you try 6 square. That's like asking 60 square, how far of this will it occupy? Let's look at that. 60 square is 3600. That's pretty close to 4096. Then maybe you go, okay, maybe 7 square will also fit, like 70 square will also fit. But then you, you do that, you find that 70 square is actually larger, right? 70 square is 4900. So that doesn't fit. And that's it. You have your first digit. And you're sure this is the first digit. Because you know that this side is greater than 60, but less than 70. In other words, the first digit of your square root is 6. And then now we still have a little bit of work to do, which is to find the second digit. But step one, finding first digit is done. Now, what do you do after this? How do you guess the second digit? The second digit is basically this gap over here. That's what it really is. So we want, we're trying to find what this gap is, right? Now, one way to do this is find this remaining area, the area in the square that's left, and then try to see if we can guess what this question mark should be. So what's the remaining area over here? The total area is 4096. The remaining area, the, the area of this 60 square is 3600. So the remaining area is this minus this. So I'm going to call it remaining area. Remaining area is just 4096 minus 3600, which is 496, right? There's 400 between them and then a 96 more. 
So 496. That's this entire area, this L-shaped area. But then I don't have any formula for L-shaped figures. So now I'm going to try and break this L down into some shapes. Why? Why do I want to do that? Because then I may be able to write that area in terms of this question mark. If I can write it as maybe some length into breadth or something like that, then I can guess this question mark. Now, it, this will become clearer as we do it. So I'm going to break this down into maybe one rectangle here, one more rectangle here, and then one square over here. Let's see how that looks. So two rectangles over here. There they are. And one square over here. Now notice that this question mark is, is going to be the same question mark here and then this question mark, this length, whatever, this gap is the same gap over here. So if I write the same gap in terms of the question mark, how do I do that? It's equal to this area plus this area plus this area. Just pause and see if you can write this in terms of question marks. Okay, so I'm going to I'm gonna do this now. This length is 60. This length is question mark. So area of this rectangle is 60 into question mark, right? 60 times question mark, 60 into question mark. No, but I have one more of that. These two are exactly the same. This is 60 and question mark again. So that's two times, two times 60 into question mark. That's these two rectangles, but I need the square. That square side is just question mark. So I have a plus question mark square. And uh, this sum has to be equal to 496 because that's the remaining area, right? Now, I can simplify because I can take this question mark out. Before I start guessing, I want to make it as simple as it is for me to guess. So then I just do that. I, I take my question mark out. I get 120 plus question mark. 120 over here plus one question mark from the square. And maybe this is as simple as it gets. I, I may have to start guessing now. Uh, I shouldn't put equal to actually because it may not exactly be equal to. So I'm going to say maybe less than or equal to. I'm actually trying to find that question mark such that this area will be less than 496 but as big as possible. I want to find it as close as possible but then it may not exactly be 496. So less than or equal to 496. So the real question is what's the biggest question mark such that this thing, this area, will still be less than 496 because if it becomes more, then we know that we've already overshot, just like we did in the first digit case. So let's start guessing. I'm going to start with 1. Um, so 1 into 121. That's my first guess. Even as I write it, I can see that's probably not going to give me my answer because that's just, that's very close, 121. But I have till space till 496. I can definitely go bigger. So I'm going to try and jump to 123 now. So that'll be 3. The question mark, I'm guessing this gap, I'm guessing to be 3. So 3 into uh, 123. 123. Now if I do that, now that's equal to um, 369. I still feel like I have a space of about 100. So uh, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to try 4. So 4 into... 124. Now let's calculate this. 4 into 124. You can do this. I'm going to try and do it in my head. 4 times 120 is 4 twelves are 480. Plus 4 times 4 is 16. 496. That's exactly matching what the gap is. It need not have. It, we just were trying to make it lesser. If this had been 495, we would have still been really happy. But it's exactly 496. And what does that mean? Making this gap, let's let's uh, now fill that gap in. Making this gap equal to 4, right, equal to 4. What it does is exactly fills this remaining area. In other words, 60 plus 4, this side being 64, makes the area exactly 4096. In other words, 4096 is a perfect square. We did not know this when we started. But now we know that it is a perfect square. And we are happy. And now to get even happier, let's look at the recipe as it's given in the book. But this time when we see it, maybe we can understand what each step is as we do them. So let's do that. 4096. And step one of the recipe in the book says, group these into digits, two, two digits at a time. 
If it's odd, start from the right. If it's decimal, start from the decimal and go either way. You can check this out in the book. Now, the reason we're doing this is now you know that we're trying to group it into multiples of 100. You take two, two digits at a time, that's multiples of 100. So that you can guess our square root one digit at a time. So in this case, you get two bars. That basically tells you you have two digits to guess. Then what do you do? You go here and ask, what's the number whose square is less than 40? And then you say 6 is that number. And you write 6 here. And you say 36 is that. You may be seeing a pattern over here. And then you subtract. And you get 4 over here. And you take the 96 down. That's the remaining area as we did it. But here you're just subtracting. Now, at this time, what you've done is guess the first digit. Now, this, this is the part of the recipe that really confused me, which was take 6, multiply it by 2, put a question mark next to it, and then put another question mark over here. Now guess what this question mark should be, such that 120 question mark, 120, if this third digit is the question mark, into this question mark will be less than 496. Now, we can try 1, 2, 3 and all that, but we already know 4 works, so we can directly do that. So I can just go ahead and mark this as 4 and write 4 over here. When I saw this, I had no idea. It felt like magic, but now I understand why. I'm trying to find the area of this, this remaining area such that this gap can be guessed. And 124 is this part. This question mark part is over here. So 4 into 124 is what we wanted. You may be noticing how these two are exactly the same. And you get zero. In other words, we get the area to match exactly. So we stop. And then we say our square root is 64. Now this recipe is what we call the division method. And I think it's called the division method because it looks a lot like long division. But as you may have seen, it's not got much to do with division. Maybe one other way to name this would be a digit by digit method of finding the square root digit by digit and that tells you a lot more about what you're really doing so you have the recipe now but you also know why this recipe works